Hi dear friends, welcome to the CSS Learners Academy. The relationship between Pakistan and United States was formally established soon after the creation of Pakistan on 15th of August 1947. There were several reasons for Pakistan to be a friend of United States and for United States to choose Pakistan as well. Since then, we have seen several types of ups and downs between the relationship of both countries with both of them accusing one another. And then there are several areas of cooperation where both countries are cooperating with each other. Today, we will discuss what are the areas of convergence and divergence and how the relationship was developed and how it was affected by the regional as well as the international partners. So I have created a timeline in this lecture. So we will start from the 15th of August 1947 until this moment and we will discuss, we will try to cover as much aspects of this uh, question as possible because as per my perception, the question is going to be asked in the coming exam of uh, 2021. The reason why uh, I am so convinced that it, this should be asked is the recent deal between the United States and Taliban, which was obviously mediated by Pakistan. So the most important dimension of the, this relationship that you need to cover for the upcoming exam is that deal. Be, uh, but obviously, you cannot only talk about that deal with, uh, without the pretext or without mentioning what the relationship was and how it has developed. What is the kind of trust or mistrust between uh, Pakistan and United States? So let's start our lecture for today. The relationship was formally developed on the 15th of August 1947. Pakistan was a newly uh, created state just like India. Both of these countries got independence from British on the 14th and 15th of uh, August 1947 respectively. Now um, as for the United States there was a period of Cold War. But Pakistan was facing an existential threat from the eastern neighbor India just from the initiation of uh, the country. Like India very famously stated that uh, Pakistan is not going to survive or we will not let Pakistan to survive. And that has been evident in the history of last 70 years what they have tried uh, to get Pakistan back into the fold of uh, this kind of united India, which is a known uh, policy of RSS. Even in a, re a recent program of uh, Head to Head in Al Jazeera, uh, when a guest from RSS was invited and in a talk with the famous anchor Mehdi Hassan, he stated that RSS still believe that Pakistan and Bangladesh will going to be merged into India someday and that is a kind of a greater Indian concept, the Akhand Bharat concept, which is still in the minds of the Indian fascists. So what we need to understand here is that Pakistan is uh, Pakistan was a comparatively smaller state as compared to India with respect to population, with respect to our economy, uh, the cultural diversity and several other things. Therefore, we were facing a kind of existential threat as the issue of Kashmir was the starting point uh, which is known as the bone of contention between the both countries. But the issues were not only on the eastern border. We were also facing very uh, disturbing problems on the western border of Durand Line which I have explained in another lecture. So because of all these troubles, was what, what was important for Pakistan was to stand with a country which can support Pakistan uh, in a kind of a bilateral relationship. Pakistan can give them whatever we have and in response we were kind of expecting a kind of security and protection from that state. Now I would like to say here that uh, Many people uh, today say that oh, this was a mistake that Pakistan uh, had chosen United States for them. But I like to say that it was a kind of a marvelous achievement of the think tanks of that time because it was just an initial stage of Cold War. The Cold War was started uh, after 1945 and it was in 1947 when our country was created. So in these two years, our think tanks were able to assess what is going to be the outcome of this Cold War. So keeping in view that outcome, it was in the benefit of Pakistan to select or to choose a country which is going to be the winner of this Cold War. And we chose United States 
US and USSR both offered assistance and a hand of friendship to the newly born countries India and Pakistan. But what was the reason why these states were trying to do that is obviously because of Cold War. In the period of Cold War, as we see, that both countries were trying to expand uh, their blocks and uh, uh, trying to maintain relationship with as much countries as possible. In addition to that, there was a protection policy of United States. As we uh, read this concept of bandwagoning in international relation, which says that uh, try to take countries into your fold and to make them do or to make them not to do what you want from them. So that is important. But uh, this was the policy applied by United States to the European countries as well when they were all taken under the US umbrella of nuclear weapons. And that policy was also applied to the Asian countries. So the next point after development of relationship is the visit of the first Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawab Zada Liaquat Ali Khan to United States. This incident happened in the year 1950 when the first Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawab Zada Liaquat Ali Khan was invited by the President of United States, Henry Truman. And Liaquat Ali Khan stayed in the country for a period of 23 days. This was one of the longest uh, you know, stays uh, of a Pakistani leader in the foreign countries. And there, both countries signed several agreements of mutual cooperation and how they can uh, you know, mutually get benefits from one another and establish their relationship on the basis of trust and mutual defense. It was also reported that during that visit, Henry Truman asked uh, Prime Minister Lakat Ali Khan to give America an access to establish a CIA-based uh, facility inside Pakistan, which was re uh, rejected by our Prime Minister. From 1951 to 1953, we see a series of signing of uh, agriculture-based agreements because Pakistan is basically an agriculture country as we have studied that agriculture is the backbone of our country. So we have seen that the first thing which United States was interested about or the first thing that they have taken in trust was the agriculture of the country and to make Pakistan independent that was the first thing that was planned. 1954 is a very important uh, year in this regard both for Pakistan and United States because it is the first time when the mutual defense agreement between uh, both countries was signed. It is known as MAAG Mutual Assistance Advisory Group. Under this agreement, the Pakistani officers, military officers would be uh, going to United States for special military training. In the same year, 1954, uh, Pakistan signed CETO and CENTO. CETO and CENTO were the organizations which, uh, which were created uh, for mutual defense of all the involved countries and to stop the expansion of Soviet Union in the Asian countries. CENTO was basically uh, an organization known as METO, M -E -T -O, Middle East Treaty Organization and it was signed in the year 1955. It is also known as Baghdad Pact because it was signed in the Iraqi capital of Baghdad. But later on in the year 1958 when uh, a martial law was imposed in uh, Iraq and the government was dismantled and the new government was uh, more affiliated towards Soviet Union so they got uh, Iraq out of this contract and that's why the name of this organization was changed to CENTO, Central Treaty Organization and the headquarter was uh, shifted from Iraq as well. In the year 1956, Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission was established. The first building of Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission was in Karachi, the post office and on the second floor of um, uh, that building we got two rooms and in these two rooms one of the room was for chairman PAEC and the other room was uh, for the 11 scientists who started or initiated this process. But what is important? Uh, to know here is that Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission was created with the help of United States and it was one of the programs of Eisenhower Doctrine. Eisenhower Doctrine uh, stated that none of the countries should acquire uh, nuclear uh, power for themselves. Instead, the Americans will give you the nuclear technology and in response to that, the countries will not go towards the weapon grade program. 
so pakistan atomic energy commission was uh, working on the nuclear technology based on plutin plutonium and that is the reason that it got so many years to got a nuclear weapon and even paec was not able to do that after the indian explosion of 1974 i will explain this issue in detail in the nuclear uh, politics in south asia but uh, here what we need to understand is that as united states was keen to give pakistan more and more resources to stand on uh, its own they were also limiting the power of the country to keep a proper control and that is one uh, evidence of the same so paec was established in 1956 and in the same year uh, peshawar air base was also given uh, to usa where uh, cia and isi will jointly work together and to look after the expansion the famous u2 incident of 1960 uh, when the plane was downed by soviet union and it was a spy plane uh, it was also flown from the peshawar air base peshawar air base and shiraz air base of iran these two uh, air bases were the most important air bases uh, for the strategic uh, missions of united states in this region then in the year 1965 a war was erupted between india and pakistan and it was the first time that we see a kind of diversion from the friendly relationship between us and pakistan because uh, in this event of war of 1965 uh, the regional organization um uh, established by us uh, cito and cento they did not help pakistan there and they said that our only objective is to stop the expansion of uh, soviet union in the region whereas pakistan gave them uh, clues that what india is doing is uh, already on the behalf of soviet union and um, everyone knows that although india has tried to maintain a kind of uh, hypocritical position uh, to be a partner of uh, Uh, all uh, non aligned movement but the uh, the growing relationship between ussr and india was evident to the world and uh, we also provided the us with proofs that soviet union is instead helping uh, the indians in their war against pakistan so it is the growing influence of soviet union and these organizations were created <coughs> were created for the same purpose so they should come to the aid of pakistan but the organizations did not and on the other hand united states did not help pakistan in the individual capacity as well i mean as i was talking about the agreements of 1954 there was a mutual defense agreement between both countries and according to that con uh, contract united states had to help pakistan in this uh, crisis but they did not and the same kind of behavior was uh, observed in the war of 1971 and in these both wars united states even uh sanctioned the pakistani economy to make us more and more weaker this kind of uh, behavior from a country that you trust this kind of behavior from a country uh, that you think as your ally was disturbing and discouraging for pakistan so in the aftermath of uh, the war of 1971 uh, zulfikar ali bhutto the son of shanawas bhutto of junagar became the prime minister of pakistan the first thing that uh, zulfikar ali bhutto did was to take pakistan out of cito and cento because the conscious of uh, zulfikar ali bhutto was very clear about whatever was going on on the international arena i mean united states was establishing relationships with uh, india by using back channel diplomacy and that that was disastrous for pakistan it was just like if pakistan would be maintaining relationship with ussr it was a period of cold war and we had already faced uh, many things on behalf of united states therefore that was a kind of response from pakistan uh, after the war of 1965 and 1971 so we responded united states in a way that not only pakistan um, exit from the two organization but also maintained relationship started to maintain relationship with soviet union and that is the reason that in the year 1973 we see that uh, the ussr responded with a good will and they established uh, the steel mills karachi in the year 1973 organization of islamic cooperation which was established back in 1969 it grew uh, with a more stronger power in the period of uh, prime minister zulfikar ali bhutto there were several reasons for that number 1 is the arab israel war in the year 1973 there was a last arab israel war and uh, after that the arab the arabs put a total control on uh, the exports of oil uh, to israel and to import of the israeli made uh, goods 
so that was a kind of a strong response on behalf of organization of islamic cooperation pakistan has played a very important role in strengthening the organization uh, especially in the session which happened uh, which held in lahore in the year 1974 so there was a kind of a new nexus a new kind of power that uh, pakistan was developing relationship with the other countries and that was uh, uh, minimizing the dependency of the country on united states in the year 1972 we see another important development and it was the visit of us president richard nixon to china china was a communist country and uh, they were like uh, a locked country uh, facing a kind of xenophobia and uh, china was not open to the world and world did not know anything about chinese so in the year 1971 uh, pakistan arranged a visit of us president richard nixon and secretary of state henry kissinger in the year 1974 as i was talking earlier indians conducted uh, operation smiling buddha and became a nuclear power that was a kind of uh, a backstabbing behavior for pakistan because united states have given pakistan the assurances that unless you are under the protection of united states and getting uh, the nuclear technology no other country in the region especially india would acquire the nuclear power but india became a nuclear power in 1974 and instead of applying sanctions on india what us did was to say that pakistan has to uh, compromise with this new reality that was another thing which further deteriorated the relationship between both countries because over trust on the united states was based on some principles and those principles were not a, a kind of imaginative principle what but the thing which was provided to us by united states uh, in the mutual defense agreements and several other things between the two countries but when this kind of behavior uh, was evident to pakistan that uh this is uh, the hypocritical behavior of us was evident then pakistan started to rethink uh, their foreign policy whether we should be dependent on us in the way that we are or we should think about the other options as well even it is reported that when prime minister zulfikar ali bhutto visited us regarding the uh, new development in the region he was threatened that if pakistan would follow the path of india americans are going to make an example of pakistan it was at that moment when prime minister bhutto stated that we will develop a nuclear program even if we have to eat grass and in very next year 1975 pakistan nuclear program was initiated in krl kahuta research laboratories or the khan research laboratories when abdul qadir khan was invited uh, to pakistan and he uh, was and he initiated the nuclear program which was based on the uranium enrichment uranium enrichment at that time was a new technology for the world but as pakistan initiated uh, the nuclear program there were proposed amendments like we know about the simington amendment of 1976 and glen amendment of 1977 the glen amendment was even more serious than the simington amendment because glen amendment not only talk about the us based sanctions but also the sanctions from international organizations like the united nations like imf like uh, world bank and all other uh, financial institutes would not be helping the country which is seeking a nuclear program so these amendments uh, were basically uh, targeting the pakistan nuclear program directly so you see how the relationship was deteriorating further and further and why this gap was created in the initial stages but the situation changed dramatically in the year 1979 february 1979 is the year when we see the iranian revolution and december 1979 uh, soviet union was invited to afghanistan and the troops landed these two in, uh, incidents was, uh, were kind of a shock for united states because uh, iran was a great partner of united states in uh, the initial stages of cold war and they were formulating their future plans based on their relationship with iran but with the iranian revolution the first thing the iranians did was to ban all kind of the american and israeli made products and to say that we don't want any kind of diplomatic relationship with united states and the second incident was when the soviet union was in afghanistan now that was a time a decisive moment for united states 
बिकॉज अफगानिस्तान बिकॉज ऑफ इट जियो पोलिटिकल इम्पोर्टेंस अफगानिस्तान इज़ द ओनली कंट्री थ्रू विच द कंटेनमेंट ऑफ रशिया चाइना और ईरान वॉज गोइंग टू बी पॉसिबल फॉर यू एस सो दे फॉर्मुलेटेड अ पॉलिसी दैट दिस कंट्री शुड नॉट गो इन टू द हैंड्स ऑफ सोवियत एट एनी कॉस्ट बट अमेरिकन वर नॉट इन अ पोजिशन आफ्टर द डिवास्टेटिंग वार ऑफ ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ऑफ वियतनाम वॉर फ्राम नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फाइव टू सेवेंटी फाइव the us was not ready to face ussr directly therefore a plan was envisaged known as operation cyclone which i have mentioned very very briefly in another lecture so what happened in the aftermath of uh, initiation of operation cyclone is that that suddenly pakistan was the good guy suddenly uh, suddenly pakistan was trustworthy the united states not only halted the previous amendments but they also promised pakistan to give plenty of aid so this uh, totally changed the scenario and we can see that now the countries were converging the relationship was getting better so the strategy of uh, preparing proxy and to send them to afghanistan were uh, was made osama bin laden a trustworthy of cia who was previously working on the cia missions in nigeria was brought back to afghanistan he belonged to a very famous uh, saudi family bin laden uh, and he was sent to afghanistan to gather all the militants under one flag and to start the continuous operations against the soviet troops uh, he was named the lead- leader of that organization which is known as al qaeda now pakistan was working on the nuclear program with the same progress as we had but now united states was providing a cover to the pakistani nuclear program as mentioned in the book several reports were filed by cia that pakistan is actually uh, making uh, progress on the nuclear program on the covered nuclear program but the state department deliberately uh, pushed aside all those reports because they needed pakistan for their war against soviet union so in the meantime pakistan was working and making progress in the year 1983 pakistan had the first uh, cold test of nuclear weapon and in the year 1985 us uh, senate passed a resolution which is known as the pressler amendment why this was happening because uh, us congress was concerned about the reports of pakistan making progress on the nuclear program now the president and the state department were clearly saying that pakistan is not doing anything but because of these reports the congress passed this amendment pressler amendments states that us should not approve any kind of economic assistance for any country unless uh, the assurances were given by the us president now it was a kind of mistrust between the us congress and the president because they stated that we are not going to approve anything unless the president give us assurances that nothing is happening in the year 1988 the war was ended soviet troops left afghanistan soviet uh, soviet union was dismantled new countries were established in the eastern european countries or the countries we know as central asian states and the whole situation was changed again now america was the only superpower of the world but in these years of war from 1981 to 1987 we see that united states gave uh, so much financial assistance to pakistan that pakistan became the second largest recipient of the aid from united states now what was this kind of money and what it did to pakistan in the years to come is another disturbing story because it not only promoted the corruption inside the political circles as well as the military bureaucracy of our country but it created a kind of divide uh, between the politicians and uh, the military even further and not only this pakistan became a hub of these extremist militants and after that pakistan faced a continuous uh, struggle against the the sectarian extremism and then terrorism in our country now it is very clear that uh, the financial aid that us was given giving to pakistan was for the sake of this war therefore in the year 1989 prime minister benazir bhutto visited uh, united states and she stated that united states must stop helping the afghan militants at the rate of 50 million dollars per annum in the year 1990 now the war was over and amendments were back there 
So the US initiated Pressler Amendment against Pakistan in the year 1990 and the financial assistance to the country was stopped until Pakistan gave assurances that we are not working on the nuclear program or we are not making progress any further. In the same year 1990 France agreed to cooperate with Pakistan and to build up the nuclear uh, plants at Pakistan uh, but uh, that plan was cancelled as well under the US pressure. Now here we see in 1990s a kind of dramatic shift uh, in the relationship among United States and India. As I was talking earlier that the relationship was there as we see in the war of 1965 and 1971 but here it was getting very clear and evident to the world how this relationship is developing in the year 1992. US ambassador threatened Pakistan that we are considering Pakistan to be put on the list of state sponsored of terrorism because of the factor that Pakistan is using the tactics of militancy against India now this was a kind of dramatic shift i mean india was doing the same with pakistan and us was not an ally of india but pakistan since the initial stages of the country and we recently helped um us to get succeed in their war inside afghanistan we have lost many things we have our financial loss our public loss and the loss of overall uh, atmosphere of uh, this extremism which has been sowed in the country since those days and now us is developing relationship with our enemy in the year 1995 then we see a kind of convergence between the countries when prime minister benazir bhutto visited united states and she stated that the amount that the us committed to pakistan before the um, imposition of pressler uh, amendment should be paid to the country so under that agreement the brown amendment was passed in the year 1995 and part of a payment was released In the year 1998 India conducted the nuclear test once again and in response to that Pakistan also conducted the nuclear test because now Pakistan was in a position to do that the the United States imposed sanctions on both countries under the Glenn amendment of 1977 in 1998 we see that the government of Taliban in Afghanistan was established pretty well which was basically established in 1996 and now they were gaining more and more areas inside Afghanistan so it was a kind of situation which was like out of control of the regional countries therefore US has to intervene and then we see the incident of 9/11 and then the announcement of uh, uh, president bush regarding the initiation of global war on terrorism and the first country to be targeted was afghanistan so when global war on terrorism was uh, initiated now us again needed pakistan as it happened in the year 1979 so now all the amendments were halted and us promised pakistan to give the assistance and they also asked pakistan for a passage in their strategy to attack afghanistan now they not only asked but as explained by pervez musharraf in his book the us threatened pakistan that if pakistan do not cooperate uh, with us in at this stage uh, pakistan will be bombed back to the stone age uh, so all sanctions were lifted the relationship again saw a kind of rise in the year 2004 pakistan was labeled as uh, the major non nato ally mnna the status of mnna was given to pakistan in uh, 2004 and Uh, other than pakistan israel is the only country which has this status 2008 is the year when we see that that the decline of relationship happened once again when an american air strike killed the 11 paramilitary troops in 2009 we see the initiation of kerry luger bill i have talked about this bill as well kerry luger bill rejected by the parliament of pakistan but at that time pakistan was facing the, the militancy so pakistan army launched uh, continuous operations in the year 2006 7 8 9 and then in the year 2010 when uh, a grand operation was launched inside fata and abdul ghani brother was captured abdul ghani brother the same person uh, who was leading uh, the uh, taliban side in the recent doha talks so he was captured by pakistan us appreciated that and it happened in the year 2010 2011 
is the year which once again uh, struck the relationship very hard because of the famous incidents uh, number one of them is uh, Raymond Davis. Raymond Davis and uh, American uh, personnel who killed uh, two people inside Lahore. Pakistan stated that as he is a citizen of US so normal procedure according to the constitution of Pakistan should be followed but United States uh, was of the view that he is a diplomat although he did not hold any position uh, or any document which would uh, which may prove that he is a diplomat because diplomats have a kind of immunity so he did not enjoy the diplomatic immunity but US putting US was putting pressure on Pakistan for the release of Raymond Davis the second incident is when Osama bin Laden was killed inside a compound in Aptabad. That was a kind of military operation which according to Pakistan was not informed. Pakistani government or Pakistani military or even intelligence was not informed about the operation. And next thing was the Salala base attack. Salala base attack happened on the Pakistan-Afghan border when the US airstrike killed 24 soldiers of Pakistan. There was an outrage in the country and in response to that, the Pakistani government decided to halt the NATO supply. It remained halted for a period of one year unless United States provided an apology for what had happened. After that, in the year 2012 and 13, the relationship remained kind of strained and then in the year uh, 2014, when 16 December 2014 an attack was happened on uh, army public school and college Peshawar and in the aftermath of that attack Pakistan government and military sat together and formulated a strategy which is known as NAP national action plan under national action plan Pakistan army launched grand operations uh, in all the FATA agencies with the name of Zerbe Azb operation Zerbe Azb resulted in a complete uh, success US was happy because Pakistan was conducting a, conducting a grand operation and it would also save the US interest in um, this region. Uh, therefore, we see a kind of acceptance of this behavior uh, by United States. In the year 2017, new Afghanistan policy was announced. The president of United States of America, Donald Trump stated in 2017 that the US is not going to stay in Afghanistan forever. Therefore, Pakistan has to play a role because Pakistan is maintaining safe havens inside the country. This was a blame game happened in Pakistan and uh, after that we knew that the basic purpose of this thing was to put pressure on Pakistan economically uh, placed by placing Pakistan on the grey list of FATF. When Pakistan was placed on uh, FATF, obviously Pakistan will face the economic decline and the dependency of China will increase and therefore Pakistan will look forward uh, to, um, uh, to the international financial institutions. In the next year 2018, United States requested Pakistan to mediate between Taliban and the US because US was intended to leave Afghanistan as soon as possible. Pakistan brokered that deal and now recently we see in the year 2020 that the deal was finalized. In this American war on terrorism, Pakistan has lost more than 70,000 civilian lives, more than 10,000 lives of servicemen and a loss of 70 billion dollars. It is a kind of rough estimate of what Pakistan has faced uh, in all these years of war. Now after that when US came to the conclusion that war is not uh, you know a successful strategy to deal with Afghanistan it was the same thing which Pakistan stated back in the year 2000. As mentioned in his book in the line of fire Pervez Musharraf says that uh, we tried to make uh, this clear to uh, Americans that war is not an option in Afghanistan. We should use the diplomatic methods but US was not ready to hear anything. The strategy was planned and that was a grand strategy which, uh, which I will describe if uh, we would be able to complete uh, this syllabus in due course of time. But according to that grand strategy they had to attack Afghanistan but what they got in, the, in a period of 20 years is evident to the world. Therefore, we can say that uh, recently there is a kind of decisive moment for Pakistan now as it was for United States in the year 1979. 
China is a growing power and some analysts believe that it is going to be the next superpower. So it is natural that US feels threatened by the rise of China. But with the rise of China, as Pakistan and China are aligned with one another, the Pakistan will rise as well. So now there is a kind of decisive moment between China and United States, between uh, Saudi Arabia and Turkey and Iran, between Russia and the US. So now Pakistan is in a kind of hanging position, but our foreign policy is very clear about what we are going to do next. And I think if Pakistan is able to make a clear decisions of a clear dimension of how we should move further, it, it will be fruitful for Pakistan because now the regional alliance is rising once again with China, Russia, Iran, Pakistan and Turkey in the loop. So this was our next uh, lecture for today. Here we have talked about the relationship of US with Pakistan. Uh, most expectedly a question will be asked regarding the deal, uh, the Taliban deal that we have made recently. I will talk about that deal in a separate lecture of four to five minutes that will be focused on that deal only. This lecture is focused on the overall relationship between the two countries. If you have any questions, you can ask me uh, via sending me a comments or contacting me via this mobile number because in that case, I will add you in the WhatsApp groups where, where we continue to have several debates about these topics. And uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel until this moment, I will ask you to subscribe and press the bell icon as well so that you might be aware whenever I upload the new video. Stay blessed. Allah Hafiz.